Welcome back. Today I have some more updates on the 2024 Chess.com Daily Chess Championship. If you're new to my channel, I'm not a titled player, chess coach, or an expert of any kind. I'm just a random middle-aged person trying to get better at chess, and one way that I do that is I look at my games that have finished and see if I can understand my mistakes and how to avoid them next time. If you're not familiar with the 2024 Chess.com Daily Chess Championship, it's the annual daily chess championship that Chess.com holds. I don't know how many there have been in a row, they're just named by the year. It's not like the fifth annual or something like that. So I've done it, I think, three, maybe four years in a row. Started with 63,000 people this year. Now we're down to just over 3,000, divided into groups of 12 here in the second round. I've already covered most of the wins and losses that I have accrued here, but I have another loss against this 1700 rated player, and I have another win against this 900 rated player, who I think has bumped up to about a thousand now. Honestly, I have no idea how someone rated 900 made it into the second round at all, <laughs> because it was tough for me to make it into the second round. But anyway, let's look at the loss first and then the win. Well, according to the game review, my opponent didn't make any inaccuracies, mistakes, misses, or blunders. And I had two mistakes and they were right there. Historically, 100% of the time, I've never learned anything from a game where the graph looks like that and the game review lists that amount of mistakes for my opponent. There might be an exception, but I don't remember it. But just to be diligent, I'm going to go to the point of that mistake and see if I understand what I should have played instead. On the analysis tab, I'm going to turn off the lines. And I'm going to go to the point of my mistake. This is after my opponent has played at move 16. The eval bar says my opponent has a very, very slight advantage. And I apparently have at least one move that would keep us that close to even. But I didn't play it. I don't know how far a5 set me off, but a5 is what I played. So there's either something wrong with a5 or there's something that I had that was better than that. The only thing that I can think of that's wrong with a5 is that currently the a pawn is preventing their knight from hopping in here to b5. I don't think there's a problem with this, you know, capturing here because I would just capture back and I don't think they can penetrate just because they have the rook on this file. And from there I could hop my knight in here and that would have been a nice outpost. Or maybe the reason that I shouldn't push a5 is that this pawn would come forward. However, that's what I was worried about and that's why I did push a5. I thought if they push forward right now, my pawn's the only thing defending that square. They have a knight and a rook both defending b5. So the fact that my pawns there wouldn't help, they would just take it, I don't know with which one, and then they would have a piece in here. And they could pretty quickly lock it in place by playing a4, so. Well yes, I have looked around, I don't see anything that looks that much better for me, so I'm going to turn the lines on. Okay, there were several moves, knight to h7, rook f to d8, that's not an open file, in fact that's the file least likely to become open in a while, queen to d8. That gives up the defense of my b-pawn. Not that anything's attacking it right now, but they're about to. Okay, b5. I didn't think about playing b5. I thought they would probably snap it off here with en passant. And then my queen would be the thing on the open file. Queen to d7. Okay, well, if any of you understand why any of those moves are better than what I played or what's wrong with the move that I played, feel free to let me know. I'm not frustrated or disappointed this time because I went into it expecting to not understand. I was just kind of hoping maybe one of those moves would be, you know, suddenly be obvious to my brain, but I'm not seeing it, so I'm going to go on to the next game. Oh, goodness. In this one, it says my opponent and I both played with tons of mistakes. We each had five misses. I had a blunder. My opponent had two blunders. I had two mistakes, and they had a mistake, and we both had seven inaccuracies. I'm guessing one of my blunders was right here, where after a long time of having the advantage, I gave them the advantage for two turns, and they didn't know it, and we went back to draw on, and then they gave me an advantage, and I didn't realize it, and then they gave me the advantage again. Uh, that's news to me. Um, I thought we were either drawn this whole time, right through that stretch, or I had a slight advantage. All right, this one's going to be fun then, because uh, there's... Oh, I had a couple of great moves early on, and I didn't make any mistakes until move 21, so I'm proud of that. And I'm going to guess that my misses here were in complex positions. Let's make as quick a work of this as we can. Switch to the analysis tab, turn off the lines. We're going to go to, well, I was wrong. On the review tab, when I scroll down here, it said I had no mistakes or anything until move 21. But when I clicked the analysis tab, I had a, a miss on move 10 and a miss on move 11. All right. I don't know why the review tab sometimes doesn't show misses or inaccuracies, but on the analysis tab it shows all of them. I have no idea. It gave me a false impression that I had gone a lot farther without a mistake. Okay. Well, so after move nine then, my opponent, we're about even, and my opponent blundered. And I had a significant advantage. I did turn off the lines, right? Okay. Um, what did I play? I played d4. No, that's not d4. That's e4. I played d4. 
and that was a miss. So I had something better than that. Oh, okay. Was it this free pawn? I'm going to guess it was the free e pawn on e5 because it's free because if they take it, I'll get their rook for the bishop. Oh, but then they would get my bishop. Nope, it's not that because I would get a pawn and a rook and they would get my knight and my bishop. That, that's even on point material, but they would get two pieces for one. So I don't think that's it. Okay. Well, I thought I had something there for a second. Okay. Should I have castled? I don't know. I'm going to turn on the lines. I should have played knight to g5. That's that's my only move that maintains the little bit of advantage my opponent has just given me, which according to Stockfish here is just barely plus one. Not plus two like the game review thought. Knight to g5. And it says that then they would put this bishop out here, and then I would play e4. Well, I probably would have if they put their bishop right there. Why wouldn't they slide it back? And what, what is this knight doing out here now? Is it just waiting to get attacked with a pawn? Yeah, I don't believe this line at all. It says when I play this, they're going to slide the bishop up here so I can attack it with the pawn. And then it's going to go back to where it was and I'm going to take it. I'm pretty sure that my opponent would not do that because that gives me a chance to get another pawn up here and mess up their pawn structure. If they wanted me to mess up their pawn structure, they would just leave it there and play something else. That doesn't make any sense. I'm just going to guess it's going to say bishop to d7 after I play this. No, it definitely says they need to go to bishop to d5. Okay, I, I have no idea why that's the case. And then I would play e4, and then they would put the bishop back over here so I could take it and mess up their pawn structure. And I would do that, and I would mess up their pawn structure. And then I could play d4 or castle. My question is, what if they didn't do all that mess where they let me get an extra pawn out? What if they just dropped back now? Why is that bad? That's because I can now play bishop to d5, which aims here. And their best move is queen to f6, at which point I would go ahead and check them with my bishop. And they would have to move over, and then I would put my bishop back. Wow, it took a long time to decide that was a great move when just right before that it said that it was the best move. All right, well, I probably wouldn't have seen that, but now I know why knight to g5 is great. Okay, but I played d4 instead, which was a miss. Okay, turn off the lines. My opponent... Uh, had something better than that. I don't know what it was, but they played that and uh, and I took it back, which was a miss. Okay, so what should I have done? Should I have played knight to g5 again? I'm going to guess I should have played knight to g5 again. Let's turn on the lines. Yep, okay. Well, I, I didn't learn anything from that. Okay, let's go to the point of my next mistake, which after I took this pawn, my opponent did that and oh, that was a great move. Why was that a great move? It was a great move because I didn't care if they took with the knight because I had this check, which it also said was a great move. I didn't realize that it was, you know, was totally great, but it looked like I would win the knight and the bishop for the rook. And that turned out to be the case. So I was pretty sure that I was ahead here, even though I was only up one point of material. I had just picked up two pieces for my rook and I was pretty sure I was ready to castle. But it says my next mistake was on move 21, which that's what I thought was my first mistake earlier. So yeah, after 21 moves, this is what we have. What did I, did I turn the lines off? Good. Okay. I played E4 here. Finally, I should have played it a, you know, a long time ago, apparently, but, but now I played it and that was bad. Wait, I played E4 here. Okay. Well, I know what's wrong with that one. It blocks my bishop from defending the knight, which currently needs defending because it's under attack. Let me guess. They, they took it after. Yeah. They took my knight after that. Okay. I guess what I was thinking was that I could give up the knight because then I would get a piece here, but I'm guessing, I'm guessing I had something better here. What was it? Should I have put the rook on the knight and then played e4 or something? Or should I have just played d5 now? Uh, it's probably d5. Okay, I should have played d5. I understand that because it would have been protected by the bishop. It would have attacked their bishop, I assume. Oh no, now it's changed his mind while I was talking. Queen to a3 is my best move. Well, never mind. I thought if I played this, then they would drop it back. That's not what it says. It says they would come over here to g4, and then I would play queen to a3. Okay, I don't know why I need to play queen to a3, but I do understand why e4 was bad. Uh, I understand that. Okay, so they took my knight here, which was their best move, and, and then I played d5, which I thought, hey, that's a pawn fork. I'm going to get one of those pieces back for having just lost that knight. What they were supposed to do was run take this pawn and let me have the bishop, but instead they took the pawn, which wasn't that good for them, and of course I take back? All right. I assume they need to take that pawn over there. They did. All right, where's my next mistake? Uh, it was here. But what I played was I took that, so I should have done something different. I don't know what I should have done. I've looked all over the board. That seemed like the uh, reasonable move here, but it was bishop capturing c7. Okay, I had to look at it for a minute, but I think I understand that. They they can't take my bishop right now because I would take their other rook and that would be checkmate. Okay, so I basically am getting a free pawn, but they're going to check me. Then I'm going to take their rook 
And then they still can't take the bishop because then my queen would have checkmate. Okay, so after I take the pawn, they're going to take here. I'm going to take back. It says that they would then put their other rook over here on f8, and I would push my d pawn. I don't know if I would or not. If they put that rook over on f8, I think I'd probably be really tempted to just take the next one. But that's what it says. After all that... Oh yeah, it's definitely not, it's definitely my best move to play d6. Well, I probably, I would have messed up here. Even if I had picked up that free pawn, I would have messed up because I would have done this. Oh, their queen's guarding that square. No wonder that's bad. Okay. Well, at least I saw it right after I played it, but yeah, maybe I would have found that. I, I don't know. Or maybe I would have offered a queen trade. It, the computer doesn't seem to think that's a good idea. What, what would they have done if I had played here? Well, that would have been really bad. They would have taken it. And then of course I would have to take it. And then they would put this bishop here, I mean this rook here, and I would probably be really tempted to go over there, but then they would check me and I would block with my bishop, and then they would play a4, and I would take this, and they would play a3, and then I would have to put my bishop over here to guard that square, but they would come after my bishop, and I would go here, and then they would get that pawn. Okay, yeah, I'd be in bad shape, I guess. But I have two pieces. I just can't mate them on the back rank because none of my pieces are rooks, and I'm probably not going to be able to get that pawn. So the moral of the story is, even if I had played my best move here, I still would have lost. <laughs> okay. Oh, but I didn't play my best move there. I, I played this instead, which, of course, they only have one legal move, is to take back. I thought then I could take this at some point. Oh, and that is still my best move, but I didn't play it. Now that, I'm not sure why. Why didn't I play that now? I think I was worried that if I did that, they could check me down here. I would have to block with the bishop. Then they would bring their rook down here to e1 getting ready to pound in through that. And I don't know what would have happened. If I had taken this, would they have checked on a1? It says they would have, and I have to block with the bishop. It's my only good move. Now, why isn't it? Okay, rook to e1 is their best move. Then what would I do? I would play queen to d3. Oh, protecting the bishop. It would be my only move. I don't know if I would have found that or not. And now they're probably going to try to come after my queen with rook to d1 or queen to d1 or queen to b1 even. Sorry, again, it took it a long time to decide that was a great move when it had just told me it was my only move. Okay, so they're going to offer a queen trade or just come after my queen with the rook. If they come after my queen with the rook, I'm just going to scooch in here. Okay, so what if they do that? I'm going to play queen to e2. Are they going to go back? They might, and I would still be ahead. Oh, because now I can play queen to b5. Okay, are they going to come after it again? Why would they not? It says they wouldn't. Oh, they can't now because then I would have mate. So now they would threaten me with the queen. And I would just take it. Okay, so anyway, after that and this, I'm still supposed to take this pawn. But again, I was worried about, I, I didn't think I could survive their stuff coming through here on the side. So I played this, which wasn't great. But my opponent responded with the blunder of their own. How was that a blunder? See, I thought they were kind of doing the same thing, making sure they didn't get back ranked. It's because I can take that pawn now. Now, why didn't I take it? I'm not sure why I didn't take it this time, but I instead just moved my queen over to help guard that spot. It was my second best move, but it was counted as a miss. My opponent played their best move. Now I'm supposed to take this pawn. Okay, well, I remember why I didn't take it now. It's because I thought they would put their rook there, and then my bishop would be pinned to my queen, and when I moved my queen, they would... They would win the bishop. It says that's my best move. Why wouldn't they put their rook on c8? It's it's one of their moves, but what, what do I play if they play that? Oh, I can attack the bishop this way. I mean, the rook with bishop to h3. Or, or I can just play bishop to e4. I don't know what that does. Well, again, that's why I that's why I didn't take down there because, because, because I thought they would pen my bishop and I didn't know what I could do. So I just took this pawn and they took back and then I got my bishop out of danger. That also keeps, you know, their rook from being able to see the back rank. So, but apparently I was supposed to take their C pawn again. No, they're even. Okay, they're equal. So why was that just good then? And Bishop was capturing that as best because if you back up, they're really close to equal. In fact, the engine slightly prefers this. Okay, so this was my best move, not a good move. And Bishop capturing the pawn wasn't best this time. Okay. When was my next mistake? We had a bunch of inaccuracies here. Okay, after my opponent checked me, we this is several moves later, it was bad for me to get out of check. Only move for me is to block with the bishop. Okay, well, I, d I don't know why, but I went there and that's a huge blunder because, because, oh, because they can check with the rook. Okay, I understand that one. If I put the bishop here, they can't check me again. But if I get out of check the other way, oh wait, there's actually other ways to get out of check. Oh, it says one of the ways I could get out of, I could have just blocked with my queen. And they would have taken it, and I would have taken it back. 
But I wasn't going to do that because then they would put a rook in the middle and, and win the bishop. So I was only considering these two with any degree of seriousness. And I picked the wrong one because I didn't realize even now that the rook could check me until I saw the line. Okay, so the rooks checked me. I only have one move now, and that's this. And now my opponent has to play g4. I suppose at this point I thought that they were going to play g4, but I thought if they don't check me on the next move which I don't know that they can. Actually, they can check me on the next move. It's actually their second best move just to take the bishop with check, and we would be drawn, even though I would be up a piece. That's because they could check me over here. Okay. Oh, that's what they played. Okay. Yeah, I, th I thought they might play the G thing, but then I was going to take this F pawn with check, and I wasn't sure where they would go, but I thought I might be able to, you know, check them again and then win that pawn. Oh, wow. I was going to mess up bad because I didn't realize their queen's guarding their F pawn. Okay, well, this lower-rated player probably should have beaten me then. They played their second best move, which gives us drawn. See, I thought that I had, I thought we were either drawn here or I had a slight edge because, again, I have a whole extra piece. They're supposed to check me here, and I'm supposed to get away. I only have one legal move, so I, I did that one. And their best move, the only one that keeps us drawn, is checking here on e4. Now I have a bunch of moves that keep us drawn. I can play king to h3, king to h5 is also drawn. I thought if I went to king to h5, yeah, I was worried about a repetition because they can keep checking me on h1 or h7. h1, h7. Since I could also play f4 to block the check. Well, I, I thought of that because that blocks the check. I thought if they took, I would take. Well, my opponent surprised me by checking with that. Wait, how was that a miss? It's their best move. This, okay, come on, game review. That game review said that my opponent had a miss here, but the computer says they only have two moves. One is queen capturing e3, which is the free bishop. I had to give up the bishop to block that check, which I was a little worried about. And the other one is checking me. Those are the two only good moves. So it's not a miss. It's their best move. It's tied for best. All right. Well, I thought if I came over here, they'd probably check me and then we'd have a queen trade. And I didn't know what would happen. It looked like that might lose for me because they have these past pawns. So so I just took that pawn. Wait, that was a mistake? Not a mistake. It's tied from best. This and this are both zeros. So, okay. Still, uh, game review needs some help. Uh, that's my best move. Again, I didn't want to go here because... Oh, it says they would take my bishop. Why wouldn't they check down here? Just out of curiosity, if I played this, why wouldn't they check here? It says I would have a huge... Oh, because I have the extra piece. Okay, got it. So what I did play here was my best move, not a mistake. Did I have any other mistakes? Oh, I didn't. Okay. But we're still even. That was the miss that lost them the game. Yeah, they should have definitely taken the bishop here. Okay. Well, they went there and, and I found that move because it's a check and it forces the queen trade. And I was pretty sure, I'm not 100%, but pretty sure I would be able to stop some of these pawns with my bishop. Okay, well, I, I only understand about half of the mistakes and whatnot that happened in this game. And clearly, <laughs> clearly I was confused while playing it. Uh, so yeah, we did that. And then my opponent advanced a pawn and I put you know my, my bishop there to kind of hopefully help stop some of these pawns. They pushed that, and I pushed this, they pushed that, and I set it right down in there. I, I didn't know if that was best, but I knew it would keep their A pawn from getting any further, and it would keep their B pawn from going any further, so I thought that was pretty good. And uh, their C pawn can't go anywhere. Oh, but it tried, and, and then I just on passant it, and then they went after that pawn, so I just started advancing my G pawn. It's running really slow right now. They went after my bishop. I didn't know if it was my best move or not, but I kept pushing my pawn. When they got close to my bishop, I put it right there. It says that was my best move. I thought it was because now their king can't come, come around this pawn. And their king's in the way of advancing their other pawn. It says their best move is to play king to b4 or king to b5. And then I'm not going to promote. What, why? What? If they play king to b5, am I... Of course I'm going to promote. It says my best move is king to d5. No. <laughs> what? No, I'm, everybody in their right mind is going to promote here. And it's the same evaluation. I don't know how it's the same evaluation. But yeah, I'm going to promote. Okay, I just wanted to make sure because it, when it, when this line here says I'm not going to promote on the next turn, it, it was wrong. So yeah, a after I played this, my my opponent played that and then resigned. All right, well, this video wasn't entirely unproductive, but it was a little confusing, especially in the places where the game review said I made a mistake or my opponent made a miss when we played our best moves. And of course, in the a few cases where it said what I should have played and I have no idea why, uh, that's just the way it goes sometimes. But my daily rating has improved. It's now at 1342. It's gone up a little bit since I started this round of the tournament. The games that I'm winning are, are netting me more points than the games I'm losing, I guess. The, the couple of people I've lost to are rated, you know, 1800, 1700. 
This person was only rated 1,006 when I played them, but, but I got two points for it somehow. So thank you for watching. If you understand any of the mistakes that I didn't, feel free to let me know in the comments. I will appreciate it. And I'll see you next time.